There are some extinct animals out there that definitely need to be resurrected. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning! Thank you for making us a part of your daily routine and for inviting your friends to do the same. Okay, most of the species of animals that have ever existed are extinct. That's just the way it goes. You, you come onto this world and then you die. Sorry, but everybody faces it. On but, a species level. Yeah. Even. And, and all individuals. But occasionally there's a species that I'm like, mm, boy, if we brought that back, some pretty awesome stuff could happen. <laughs> so I've made a list of those. Now, I want to keep in mind, I want you to keep in mind something. Most of these animals on this list went extinct because of humans. Now, I want all these animals to come back, but my theory is, is that if we brought these animals back, they would probably be taken advantage of, exploited by people, like they always, like, like we like to do with animals. You know, we like to use animals for our, our entertainment. I do not exploit animals. Or our consumption. And so I'm just conjecturing well, I eat animals, yeah. on a couple of things that might happen if we were to bring these animals back okay. to life, which could happen. All right, the first one is the laughing owl. The laughing owl, also known as the wake owl, or the white-faced owl, was an owl found in New Zealand. In 1840, pretty recently. I've never heard of this. Uh, but the last one was found dead uh, in Canterbury, New Zealand on July 5th, 1914. He now, who laughs last is not, a, is not a laughing owl because they're extinct. Mm, Can't laugh. Well, he laughed, he laughed one last time. He, he apparently, who laughs last is the last laughing owl. That's a good one. To put ever that, have laughed. Put that on a t-shirt. He apparently sounded like a madman laughing. That's what the owl actually sounded like. <laughs> or Papa. <laughs> More like, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> All right, well, here, try here. I think if we were to bring this thing back, rich people would use it, rich people with bad senses of humor would use it to laugh at their jokes, okay? For, ex for instance. Hmm. Knock, knock. Who's there? Doris. Doris who? Doris locked. That's why I'm knocking. <laughs> Cue the owl. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, I think this is my favorite on the list, number two. The giant sloth. Now, you know what a, a modern-day sloth looks like. Yeah. This thing was four tons and 20 feet tall from head to tail. And it was a slow-moving plant eater, you know, but eater. <laughs> but he was a sloth, so he was totally harmless. This thing would make a great pet. I'm just saying that I think that there would be people who would give this to spoiled children. You know, Tommy, go play with your giant sloth. He can't hurt you. Now you do it, you give it to a spoiled child and then the child's just gonna be more spoiled. Like, why isn't he moving faster? Kind of a thing. It's just gonna get worse. Mm, okay. How about the dodo bird? When you think extinct animals, you think dodo bird. My yeah. mom used to use this uh, often to refer to stupid people. He's a dodo bird, she said that quite a bit. Because they would uh, go extinct, that, and that's well, stupid. The reason that they had the reputation for being stupid was not because they were stupid, but because they basically adapted and evolved on an island apart from humans. So here they are, they have absolutely no fear of humans, so when humans show up, there's just a fat, flightless bird that's like, huh, human, I don't care. And of course, they hmm. look like something you wanna eat. So the humans just go up there and cut their heads off and then you know, fry them up. Huh. Which is exactly what I think would happen if you brought these back. Somebody out there, somebody with an entrepreneurial spirit would open up Kentucky Fried Dodo Bird. And I got to admit, I'd probably go to it. <laughs> I mean, I am human. I like chicken. I can imagine that a chicken like about this big would be even better. I'm the, staying out of this one. The Golden Toad. Okay, the golden toad lived in the cloud forest of Costa Rica. This thing was only discovered 50 years ago. And they're already gone, huh? By a guy named Jay Savage. Very rare. He thought that he had actually found something that a prankster had put in the wild because it was so brightly colored. He was like, somebody must be up here in the cloud forest painting the frogs with Rust-oleum. I mean, I don't know what I don't know exactly what, what why he thought that, but he was convinced that it was a a prankster had done this. A prankster. I like but, how you keep saying prankster. An old, you know, you know, a little frog painting prankster. But by 1989, they had seen zero of them, and they think it's because of climate change. The fact that their habitat basically got altered, and now there's no more of them. Well, that or the pranksters had better things to do, like put cellophane over toilet seats, and you know, paint under bridges. Those are graffiti artists. That's not really a prank. That's not uh, an artistic expression. Oh, sorry. It's called tagging, Link, not Facebook. 
It ta- but he, they tagged <clears throat> the frog. They were painting frogs. They now, moved on. I seriously think that if you were to bring this back, this is the kind of thing a rapper would have in like a terrarium inside of his house. He's like, you see my golden golden toe, baby? You know, and it's like, come to my terrarium. I can, I can see, see Kanye West would have one of these next to his marble conference table. Yeah. The Irish deer or elk. This is Whoa. The, the largest deer to ever live. Uh, it was that's amazing. F- all the way from Ireland to Northern Asia and Africa, about seven feet at the shoulder. And listen, the antlers were eleven feet across. Eleven what? feet across. This thing obviously was hunted to extinction by humans. And I think if you were to bring this back, there would be quite a few of these heads gracing the mantles of many a Southern American home. Oh yeah, my father-in-law would have. He'd have to take down the three deer in his living room in order to make room for that one thing. That big deer. Could you imagine that? But he would do it. And I you could you could put kids up there to sleep like bunk beds. There's an idea. Yeah, you could carry stuff up there. The stellar like if it was alive. The stellar sea cow. Now you've seen a manatee, right? This thing is essentially a Actually man- I haven't. Not in person. You I'd like even, to. Oh, you didn't swim that time in Florida I went swimming with I was, Eric. I wasn't and you there. didn't go. I wasn't there. I swam with the manatees, man. It was it was one of the best experiences of my life. I hate that you missed that. Well, if they if you bring back a giant one, I'll be sure to show up. Well, I'm not personally responsible for bringing these back. That's the scientists. This, this thing, is just a bigger sea cow. Sea cow. That's a sea cow. <laughs> uh, this thing, well, bigger, meaning 30 feet long. Can you imagine a wow. manatee that's 30 feet long? T- weighs 10 tons. It's called Stellar, not because it's Stellar, but because it was discovered by a guy named George Stellar. Ooh. I, I hate to, you know, dash your expectations. But I think that if this thing was brought back, there would be a sea cow sunset family cruise with the slogan, ride a sea cow into the sunset. But they go underwater. All the family would have to hold their no, breath. No, you'd be, you, you would be sitting, they would be, they ride high. They, they ride like, <laughs> they, they ride like a, a foot below the water. So it just looks like a family in single file just kind of floating through the water. Walking through shallow towards water. Towards the sunset. Could you imagine getting a picture of your family on the back of a sea cow? I might actually start that if we bring this thing back. I guess I'm turning into the evil person now that I'm thinking about all the financial opportunities to exploit animals. And finally, a giant bird. Yes, this is the Argentavis magnificence. Look at this thing. This is the largest flying bird in recorded history. Now, humans are not responsible for its extinction. This thing lived in the Miocene or the Neocene, which that just means a whole long time ago before humans were on Earth. A whole long time ago. And, but this was a feathered <clears throat> bird. This yeah. is not like a pterodactyl. Right. So this is a uh, reproduction of what this thing might have looked like. It, this is not like a, a specimen that was found. Wingspan up to 26 feet. Wing area of 75 feet, which is slightly smaller than a Lear jet. Whoa. It's like a, a, a jet-sized crow. And this thing is believed to have killed prey as large as a cattle in one fell swoop. You mean a cow? Yeah. As cattle, or a, a cattle, or a cow, a heifer. Could have killed a heifer, or a bull, a bovine. Now, I wow. think that if this thing was brought back, you could train it to poop in pinpointed locations. Now, I've been crapped on by a bird before, like at the beach. Could you imagine being crapped on by something the size of a Learjet? Ooh. You would be completely covered. And if you could find a way to train this bird to crap on your enemies or like as a prank, if you're a prankster out yeah, there, the prankster could and you're not that. busy painting golden toads in the cloud forests of Argent- Costa Rica, you could do this. Mm, some sort of, some sort of, you want to harness birds for warfare. It's basically what you're saying. <laughs> if you think I missed uh, an extinct animal that should be brought back to life and exploited by humans, because that's what we do, then put it uh, in the comments. Also, thanks for liking this episode. And you can support the show by getting a free trial of Netflix at netflix.com slash link. You know what time it is. I'm Felipe from Pernambuco, Brazil, and it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. It's Friday. That means we've got another episode of our podcast, Ear Biscuits. This week, our guest is Michael Gallagher of Totally Sketch. Yes, and click through to Good Mythical More, where I understand there's some honorable mention extinctified animals that should be brought back. Totally extinctified. Possibly. Rat fishes link out of water. Hmm. Hmm. Hey man, there's like a giant sea cow over here. I'm gonna go see if I can ride it yeah, into the Yeah, you should sunset. ride it into the sunset with your family. He's down here, I'm diving oh, in. Okay. You, you, he's diving deeper than I thought he would. You okay down there, buddy? 
Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. He seems to be submerged. Uh, make some bubbles. Make some bubbles if you're okay. Bloop, 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 bloop. You're supposed to not make bubbles, so I have to fish you out. Make some bubbles if you're okay. I don't see any bubbles. I gotta go after him. Oh. This was a lot easier than I thought it would be. How was that sea cow ride, buddy? <laughs> you think we should invest in it? Uh, a little overrated. No sunset anywhere to be seen. Where's your family? Uh, oh, crap. Oh, gosh. Well, when that baby's born, that, that mom's gonna be freaked out. I had a hairy one, Bob. What do I do? I don't think elephants talk. But that's what she'd be thinking. Her husband, Bob, would be like, oh, is our mailman hairy? Well, here... <laughs>